Welcome to Centre Court with thanks to Flight Centre. Score game-changing savings on your holiday when you bundle and save with Flight Centre. And of course, CRT farming starts with CRT. No matter where you live or what you farm, it starts with CRT. Welcome to Centre Court. I'm Bianca Chatfield. Maddie Brown is alongside me and we have one exciting guest for you in this week's episode. Dave Nolin Tarawa, the Silver Ferns head coach, will be joining us just a little bit later on the show. Cannot wait to hear from oh, you, Mads. I love... When, like, when we, I heard that we had her on, I was like, oh, what a get. I mean, she's so inspirational. I love how, the insight that she gives and she's really raw and emotional, so I can't wait to hear what she has to say. Well, let's get straight into the netball wrap. And news announced this week is that Dylan, Dylan Nexip, who, of course, you might know from working on Fox Netball in the commentary, he's now joining the New South Wales Swifts as an assistant coach. Now, he's a wing defence for the Aussie Kelpies. We're going to talk a little bit more about that later as well. What do you think about this move from the Swifts? Look, I mean, I think it's a great addition. I mean, we've seen a, a couple of the male uh, netballers step into some coaching roles within, you know, development, whether it's the reserves team. Um, obviously, in Perth, we've got Guy Keane. Um, but also, you know, with the Giants and things like that. So I think it's great. I think, obviously, he'll be that real defensive focus. The way he plays, I'm sure, will be how he will expect the New South Wales players to play. That kind of ruthlessness, doggedness. He's really tight one-on-one um, -on -one pressure. I think... I think it's great also to have a fresh pair of eyes, someone else looking at it from a totally different perspective. I mean, the Swifts were probably touted to be the Premiership um, favourites this season and fell well short of that. So they have recruited strong and I mm -hmm. am like, they are out for redemption in 2025. Nowecki, Nexip into the addition of <laughs> Swifts. They are out, uh, you know, to obviously rectify this season's results. And great to see the Swifts. I think thinking a bit differently about it as well and adding in a little bit of freshness. We know he loves his netball, Dylan. We might as well continue on that conversation about the men's netball. It's now time for Maddie's Minute. Maddie, take yeah. it away. Yeah, B, I do want to talk about the Aussie uh, men's netball team. They are called the Aussie Kelpies. They will be playing a three-game test series against the New Zealand men's side ahead of the women. Um, I think it's great. It's happened for an, uh, the last couple of years. There's some familiar faces that you'll know in the mix. Uh, the head coach is um, Nerida Stewart, who is an assistant coach for the Giants. And the assistant coach for the men's is actually Julia Fitz. So there's that real Giants element in there. Um, I love watching the men play. They play with so much tenacity. It's physical. Um, they play at a speed um, that's quite aerial and the game is quite aerial. For the New Zealand team, there is a goal shooter called Junior Levy and he stands at seven foot two. So Woo. it is a complete different defensive structure and focus, but I definitely want to give a shout out to them. They've been in training camps. They've done a few practice matches against the Aussie Diamonds. They are... An absolute delight to watch because they just play with so much enthusiasm, but they're just so grateful for this opportunity because they've tr fought for it for so long. So make sure if you haven't got your timings and your schedules ready for the games yet, make sure you get there early so you can support the guys. And we know there was some big score lines from the Kelpies last year in their version of the Constellation Cup. Do you expect a better performance from the New Zealand team this time? It's really hard, and I think you need to understand that the, the men actually pay their way to play. So a lot of them have full time roles and jobs and it's really hard if you're a lawyer or you're a teacher to get that time off so sometimes they don't always have their absolute best available for selection um, but it, it's a good thing to note that you know they do put so much time energy money and sacrifice into play um, I'm hoping it's going to be a little bit tighter B but we'll wait and see but if if you haven't um, uh, found them on socials make sure you hit that at Aussie Kelpies and send them some love especially our Aussie men's players Time now for our Centre Court Deep Dive with a very exciting guest. We have the head coach of the New Zealand Silver Ferns, Dame Nolene Tarua. Welcome, Nolene. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate your time um, in between two big series for the Silver Ferns. Firstly, let's talk about what happened in the English series. Uh, what are the key takeouts for the Silver Ferns from, um, unfortunately, from losing that series? Oh, look, um, thanks for having me in, um, firstly. Um, key takeouts, um, looking at our stats, poor possession is an area that uh, we need to learn how to keep the ball in 
and uh, especially under those pressure moments. That could go back to individual skill sets or connection pieces or discipline. Um, so it, just depending on the individual, there's a variety of reasons. Um, our gains or our uh, when we secured gains off England, uh, looking at our stats once again, uh, we were ahead of them. But unfortunately, because our turnovers were too high, it sort of nullified the, the, the ball that we did get. Um, I also think as well, you know, consolidating um, some of the combinations. I'm looking forward to be able to do that. Uh, we had two deputants that took, took the court. So, you know, what more can they do in the international space? Um, so that was exciting to some degree, but it also meant a bit of a change up in combination. So um, playing against Australia, it's an opportunity for us to be better in our own game, but also to consolidate ourselves moving forward, um, like all other teams, as you know, as we build towards either the Commonwealth Games, if that happens, <laughs> or um, Netball World Cup in 2027. Knowles, you talk about those fresh new faces of Paris and Claire. They de did show that they are very capable of playing international netball. Are you travelling with a similar squad or will we see a few shuffles around? But you just want to maybe, as you mentioned, consolidate on that, that squad that you had in the English series to come over here as well. Yeah, looking to definitely consolidate the, the squad. Um, one of the things that we've learned from the past is when we chop and change and depending on the personnel in those in those areas, probably more around the mid-court, um, not necessarily has that proven to be um, equate to success coming out. And so one of the things is how can we fast track some of our players to have more international exposure, consolidating the squad for both um, England that we have done and also Constellation Cup. Mm. And you know, when you talk about the squads and you mentioned Commonwealth Games and World Cup and we obviously don't really know, we're not closer to knowing if Commonwealth Games will happen for netball, how do you go about... Um, preparing for this Australian Diamonds Constellation Cup now without really knowing if Com Games is the next focus. Does that matter to you in how you pick your teams and what squads you're going to use? Um, I suppose uh, when I look at our current squad, there's probably two members that I'm not saying are not going to be... Um, in you know uh, available in two years time or three years time um you know so we've got Edna and Mackay there who had been a, um, a silver fern and this year sort of uh, secured um, a role with us again um and also Amelia and um Ekinacio is another person you know who's on the on the uh, more experienced sort of list um everybody else on our roster can do another cycle for some of them can do another two or three so to some some degree we're looking at what that next level is going to be especially in those particular areas of goal attack um, that's probably an area that we quite haven't got the depth there so um, you know we're looking at who is that next level under Beneath. Um, and even though these people may not present um, over Constellation Cup, obviously, uh, we do have a January tour that is pencilled in. So there might be opportunities that's going to come in for building the depth. Um, uh, but for us, you know, Constellation Cup is such a big thing for this moment of time. Um, and obviously, we haven't won it for for many a year. So, you know, if we, if we can nail our nuts and bolts, so to speak, and really be confident and what we do and how we do it and go after Constellation Cup, like I suppose uh, Australia will be as well, you know, that will set the foundation pieces for us moving forward. So it's always a balancing act. Um, but, you know, at the moment, you know, it is the here and now, but knowing that there will be other players that we'll have to bring into the mix sometime. Well, a youngster that has obviously shown that she is very good on the international stage is your young shooter, Grace Nowacki, but we have stolen her and you've been <laughs> over here um, across the trans and to know exactly what our competition's like, having coached the, the Lightning to back-to-back -back premierships, Knowles. How have you kind of seen her making the move to come over here? I mean, I'm sure it puts you in a tough position because she's not eligible to play for you guys, but... It must be great to see her kind of showing that courage to take this step for her own game for when she does come back into the Silver Ferns fold. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, with Grace, she she's clear on why she is going over, and I can only applaud her on that. You know, I like it is a courageous move for her, and she is so brave. Um, I I can attest to what she will, um, how the game, how she, what she will receive over there from SCN, and hopefully her contribution as well uh, to the athletes there. Um, so there's so much upside for her that when she comes back to the fold of the Silver Ferns that I know she will be a better player. Um, so I support her in that respect. Um, on the offset to it, I also know where Netball New Zealand sit as well in regards to um, us having a competition um, that grows our own and what that means in regards to linking to broadcasting and, and the requirements from that position. So, you know, there's always a twofold I suppose, thing that needs to be played. But as I say, I, I know why she wants to go over and it's to be a better netball and to be a better silver fern. So really looking forward to seeing how we can support her in SSN uh, with the hope that she will come back to us. And quite handy as well that Bryony Aikle, the New South Wales Swiss coach, is with you and the team as an assistant coach. What has she added into the silver fern squad? Oh, I love Bryony. Um, obviously, with my time in Lightning, we had a bit of a connection there. Um, going back to the last year that I was there where they absolutely thrashed us, you know, <laughs> in that great final. So uh, the connection started from that point. Um, love her way. And what I say is, and I say this in a beautiful, you know, like with my hand on my heart, the Australian way, you know, like really competitive, no muck around and how she communicates very clear about what she expects. If anything, you know, we're a very humble type of people and once again, not downplaying how our own strengths, but, you know, like we, we do have to celebrate ourselves. We do have to look at the strengths. We do have to go out on court thinking we're bees knees, you know, and sometimes that sort of mentality doesn't sit with us uh, naturally. Um, so she brings that. Um, she's got the expertise around the attacking end as well um, and also the experience as a um, head coach. So, you know, there's a lot of facets that she is contributing, not only from on court, off court, but also towards our program as well. Oh, love it. It excites me just hearing about that. <laughs> and I cannot wait for that first test match to get underway in the Constellation Cup. For the first game, though, against the Diamonds, how, this is my final question to you, how are the Silver Ferns going to show up for that first game? Oh, look, we've just finished a four-day camp, which is... Uh, which I've loved, just an FYI. We've never been able to have camps prior to tests. You know, we've always gone in three days and played first test number one. So it's not like we're miracle workers, but having <laughs> extra time under our belt is just, oh, I've just relished the opportunity. So there's clear areas that I know time will tell. You know, so I don't want to talk ourselves up because that those clear areas are around when the momentum shifts, who's going to be the one that stands up for us, you know? So there's great leaders in our group, um, but there's still an area that we haven't quite been able to nail. Um, there's moments of time where we're up by four and then through silly errors, you know, we go back down and then we're fighting away. So if I'm sort of 100% confident, which I'm not too sure what we're <laughs> going to be, like against the Australian Diamonds, I hopefully that would be a big shift for us that we can that we can control that, that momentum because I think if we can do that and ride the waves, then we can be competitive right through uh, through the fourth quarter. So that's the intent. We'll see how we go. And of course, you do have the wood over the Diamonds when they come over to New Zealand. That's they do struggle to win over there. So <laughs> those first two games. It's going to be exciting to get you started. Thank you so much, Nolene, for joining us. We really do appreciate your time. You're welcome. Thanks for having me.
Wow, such fascinating insights from Noel Lee. We cannot wait to watch those games. Now let's get into our brand new segment, The Face Off, with thanks to CRT. Farming starts with CRT. Now today we're going to look, take a look at the matchup between Grace Nowecki and Fran Williams. Obviously that happened a few times during the Tani Jamison series. And we really wanted to discuss how we think Australia are going to stop Nowecki. We saw Fran Williams and the English Roses have a crack. Yes, they got on top of her, especially in those first two games. You can see that combination is starting to build, though, for Nowecki and the feeders out the front and finding Nowecki under the post. Who do you think the Diamonds are going to start on Nowecki when oh. they come to game one? Well, I, I do think they've got, they're kind of spoiled for choice, the Diamonds. They could either put, obviously, a Sarah Clare out on her. Bruce is back into the mix. They could also even chuck a Rudy Alice out there for that height factor. I think what, obviously, um, Fran Williams did to Nowecki was just that one-on-one -on -one physical presence. New Zealanders are so used to playing that off-the-body zone presence. So just that physicality, I think, kind of, you know, takes a little bit of getting used to. Um, I'm sure Bryony Aker will be there going, all right, this is what they're going to do. This is how they're going to use your body and stuff like that um, for Grace. So it'll be great to see how she can kind of maybe get into the game a little bit quicker and go, you know what, this physical presence, it's fine. I can I can take it. I also wouldn't be surprised if the Diamonds continue to rotate through that goalkeeper. Um, we heard Nolene even spoke speak about that ball possession and, you know, the, the mid-court is really highly contested and, and fought for a position with the Silver Ferns, but it's the the, the possession. They, they make silly errors. So if... The diamonds can rotate through that goalkeeper position. It won't only just maybe affect Grace Nowecki's positioning, but also doubt in the feeder's head. Where is that space? Where do I go? That's a different height. High ball, low ball. So I wouldn't be surprised if that happens as well. And I also think one thing England did smartly was their defensive structure. They almost threw a zone on to New Zealand to have to face some of, I guess, their own music. That's what they usually do so well against other countries. But they had a, a zone that they would throw on. They would then go and move to a one-on-one -on -one and then switching players. They did that really smartly. And I reckon we're going to see that from the Diamonds as well, where they all sink back into a space, keep the New Zealanders guessing while they can. I think that's that mental game that, you know, you can be doing the same structure and then all of a sudden a different, um, you know, defensive moves put on. Same with the attack. Like sometimes you've got to be, you've got to be able to um, change up. And we've spoken about that, you know, the diamonds usually would call a timeout in Suncorp Super Netball, but in international netball, you can't. So you've really got to problem solve during the match. So I, I can't wait to see how both teams tackle that with the different structures that are thrown out at different times. Yes, that adaptability during the quarters is going to be so, so important. Well, that was the face-off thanks to CRT Farming. Starts with CRT. Well, thanks, Maddie. Another episode of Centre Court down and a big thanks to Flight Centre. Score game-changing savings on your holiday when you bundle and save with Flight Centre. And CRT Farming starts with CRT. No matter where you live or what you farm, it starts with CRT. We will see you again next week with plenty more Constellation Cup to discuss.